Hello everybody, this is a very short video on how to start with V-Ray for Cinema 4D, where it is installed and what it principally does when um, it is integrated in Cinema 4D. So in the first place you have to install it, you purchase V-Ray for Cinema 4D and you get a file, a set of files, and you have to put them into your um, Cinema 4D in your Maxon folder. First of all, the most important thing is the viewer is coming as a plugin, so you have to put it in the plugins folder. This is the, the first step. Then there is a viewer bridge key file. You have to the license key you have to put in just into this uh, software folder. And there's a third place, a very secret place. You reach this via right click on the program icon, and it's under show package contents. And there again, there's a folder named macOS in my case because I'm using a Mac, and there's three diff, uh, additional files that have to be put there. Okay, this is all rather simple, and when you're done, you start Cinema 4D. For example, this example file I used in my first ebook on V-Ray, the house model from Adolf Loos, very simple SketchUp model, what we're trying to texture in this book. What you see is um, Cinema 4D materials assigned to the objects. You see camera, you see everything you know from Cinema 4D. This is version R13, so it looks a little bit different to the 12 uh, version, but it's no V-Ray stuff to be seen here. Okay, so where do all those V-Ray um, items nest? We choose Command B for the render settings, and this is the first thing to do. You have to activate your V-Ray renderer, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to talk about V-Ray. So when it is activated, you see a huge set of parameters you can choose from, and the most, most, um, the biggest part of it is something you know somehow. You know, anti-aliasing is not new to you, indirect illumination is not new to you, color mapping you might already know, and so on. So what you can do, you can check the anti-aliasing, the smoothing effect on, uh, on, on contrasted areas in, in your picture, and you can reduce anti-aliasing quality to just have um, faster test renderings like fixed. So I'm not talking about these things in detail now, it's just some basic items to check when you start working to not wait too long for your rendering. This is indirect illumination, it's turned off by default, you can turn it on of course, we want GI and instead of um, now, you know, thinking about all those parameters and analyzing them and trying to find out what is best for you, you can just choose a preset. And this is really very good. You can just decide for something that sounds as the one you want. For example, very fast outdoor for print size. And as a matter of fact, I checked these out and, and for my first chapter on, on texturizing texturing the uh, house model, model, which is a, daylight, a daylight and an outdoor scene, uh, this was actually the fastest um, preset for rendering. Of course it's not the best, it's only the fastest, so for test renderings it's okay, for the final rendering I choose a different one, but in the first place we take this one. So this is all, let's just try to what happens. When I hit Command R for rendering, it looks um, somehow weird because we have so many colored materials and we don't see any of them. And what we also see is that there is a blue sky and we still don't have any light source. So Viri by default um, has some sort of ambient light coming from, from all sides and it's, and it's light blue. So first things first, the material system is the wrong one because it's Cinema 4D materials and the V-Ray renderer demands for V-Ray materials. So what you can do is build your own V-Ray materials. This is what we do in the book. This is done via shader, V-Ray bridge, V-Ray advanced material and replace those texture tags by those new V-Ray advanced materials. This is one thing that you can do but you uh, to learn how Vray materials work, you can also convert existing Cinema 4D materials into Vray materials. And this is done by a plugin, a part of the plugin, 
Relay is a, pl is a plugin actually, and there's a part of it called VRay Material Converter, and you can just check this command. And you don't have to select the materials or spe special materials or some objects or something, you just choose this command and um, you see what happens, it duplicates the materials and um, creates somehow similar looking uh, V-Ray materials and what it does too, it, um, it exchanges those materials on the existing objects, which is of course very nice because you don't have to do this yourself. And now we, when we hit Command R again for rendering, we see a perfectly colored scene. That means our materials um, are working now, not perhaps the way we want to, but uh, they do work. So this is uh, one first important thing. You have to use very advanced materials or very materials uh, to be seen in the rendering by V-Ray. And you can achieve this via uh, converting existing Cinema 4D materials or you can choose uh, create V-Ray materials from scratch and assign them to the objects. So this is the first thing. Then again you can have light sources, like for example um, an infinite light. And what you get in the first place is just another Cinema 4D item. It's not V-Ray, it's only Cinema 4D. You can adjust it as used. You can decide for an infinite. You can decide for shadow, um, area shadow, and you can decide for a certain angle, of course. You have to because otherwise it would look very strange. I'm talking about uh, daylight light lighting in another video, but this is only a short thing I'm doing. And you can now render this image again. And you can see that it looks a bit strange because normally infinite light is, um, doesn't demand for a certain position. But in this case it does. This is a mistake in a way. But what you normally would do now um, you have a Cinema 4D light, but you would like to turn this into a V-Ray light. So let's see what happens when we do this. Just right-click on this um, light object and look for the V-Ray bridge tags. And there's one V-Ray light uh, tag we can attach to this. And there again, we have some additional functionality. We have still our light source from Cinema 4D. We can still adjust coordinates, for example. We can still try to do something here, but as you will see, this is overwritten by the V-Ray light expression settings. And you can reach the, these via clicking on this uh, small tag. And when we have an infinite light, the sunlight tab comes um, in handy. And you can check physical sun and physical sky. And you will see that now you can't change the light type again in the general settings of the Cinema 4D light. You can do what you want, it's always turning into an infinite again and you will always see ray traced heart as a shadow here. You can do what you want about it, nothing changes, but you can be uh, sure that th this is not hard shadow because the physical sun produces area shadow. Okay, so by some uh, clicking only these two options, Physical Sun and Physical Sky. We changed our light set. And we don't see this strange border again. So, this is what we will work with in the book and what you will would like to do every time you work with a V-Ray renderer, of course, you will turn the Cinema 4D light into a V-Ray light and with the according options. Like in this case, infinite for daylight, sunlight. And um, you would see later on that this is actually turning one light source and two light sources because it is the directed light from the uh, physical sun which is producing the hard shadows or the shadows and you have this uh, diffuse light coming from the physical sky and you can adjust it to lighten up the scene where no sunlight reaches the faces. So there's still some thing uh, left to be explained because you would like to have the camera in the V-Ray style too. So when you 
right click it, you have a V-Ray bridge tag called V-Ray physical camera. And this turns your camera, or, that, or this adds um, V-Ray features to your Cinema 4D camera. It still stays um, adjustable by a Cinema 4D parameters like coordinates and focal length and so on. This is all done by, let's say, traditional Cinema 4D features, but you can also have these V-Ray physical camera settings. You can either check this tab or you can directly click on the um, V-Ray camera tag and the most important stuff is under lens parameters. And here you can um, decide for a physical camera, which is of course the thing we want because this makes handling the light in the scene, lighting the scene very much easier. And you can check exposure and it is checked by default as you can see. So you can adjust your the light amount in the scene by adjusting some very familiar parameters like film ISO, f-stop and shutter speed. So up to now we have some daylight parameters. When you're an experienced photographer you know that you would have a rather little film ISO for daylight um, photographs and you have a, in an f-stop 8 and shutter speed 200. Let's see what it looks like when we use these settings. It's even lighter. It's even lighter, so uh, we have to do something. You can now, and this is the advantage of using a physical camera, you can use the parameters you already know from taking normal photographs with a normal camera. You can adjust, for example, the f-stop. You can put it to, let's say, 14 and see what happens. Okay, the image gets darker. Who would have thought that? So, let's recall what I um, was telling you. I was telling you how you install the V-Ray Bridge plugin for Cinema 4D. That was easy. And I showed you some places where V-Ray hides inside Cinema 4D. This was, first of all, in the render settings, choosing V-Ray Bridge as renderer. Then again, you can take some decisions in these um, in the V-Ray renderer parameters. Then again, we have um, the textures, the materials that are assigned to the objects. They have to be advanced um, V-Ray advanced materials to work properly in the rendering. Otherwise, you won't see anything characteristic. You can convert Cinema 4D materials, or you can create um, V-Ray materials of your own. Then you can turn a simple light source from Cinema 4D into a V-Ray light, which is much more complex. It's then working like the uh, sky object in, in Cinema 4D, only with a tag. You can just check, click the tag, and, and you know, looking for all those parameters, you can might you might want to to change or adjust. And as a third thing, we have the camera being turned into a V-Ray camera via the V-Ray camera tag which gives you the um, possibility to adjust your image lighting via parameters known from your real camera in real life. So this was it. Um, I hope you enjoy my ebook. We will talk about those things in the ebook too, but the ebook is, um, as its name tells, mostly on texturing. So I just wanted to give you this small introduction. Hope you liked it and See you soon.